And now, now meet, meet the press. The press. Today's, Today's guest on Meet the Press is Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, the head of the Atomic Energy Commission. Our panel consists of Marquis Childs of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, John Finney of the New York Times, Peter Hackis, NBC News, and Lawrence E. Spivak. Now here is our moderator, Ned Brooks. This is Ned Brooks inviting you to Meet the Press. Our guest today is the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, a Nobel Prize-winning scientist. His job has long been considered one of the most important in the world. And now here is the first question from Lawrence C. E. Spivak, our permanent member of the Meet the Press panel. Uh, Dr. Seaborg, I know it hasn't been announced, but can you tell us, has a final decision been made yet as to whether or not the U.S. will test in the atmosphere? The final decision has not been made yet, Mr. Spivak. Can you tell us when it will be made? No, I can't tell you when it will be made, if it will be made. Can you tell us what the final decision will be based on? Well, the uh, final decision uh, will be made uh, by the president, of course. And uh, I suppose that uh, he would want to base it... Uh, uh, in large part on the results of the analysis of the uh, Soviet tests. Uh, I would also suppose that uh, he uh, would never take this decision to test in the atmosphere on the basis of uh, political or terroristic considerations, uh, such has been uh, at least part of the reason for the Russian testing, but uh, would base his decision uh, entirely on uh, the uh, technical need for the information in the interests of our national security. Dr. Seaborg, can you tell us whether you have recommended that we begin testing in the atmosphere? No, I couldn't uh, tell you that. I believe at one time you <coughs> said that we can go a long way toward keeping pace with the Russians even if they continue testing in the atmosphere, if we continue testing underground. Uh, is that correct? Was that yes, that, that's correct. correct. Do you still believe that? Yes, I still believe that. Then you really don't think it is necessary for us to test in the atmosphere in order to keep up with the Russians despite their present tests? No, I said we could go a long way towards uh, keeping pace with the Russians. Um, if you raise the question uh, uh, whether we could keep up uh, indefinitely, forever, uh, with the Russians testing in the atmosphere and our te testing underground, uh, I wouldn't be so sure. Well, what about these 25 or 26 tests that they've made so far? Uh, can, we, uh, can we test in the underground and still keep up with them despite these tests? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, you, you were reported as saying that you didn't think the Russians were ahead of us in nuclear development. Uh, do you still feel that way despite this, these 25 tests? Yes, I still feel that way. Can you tell us what you're, based, you're basing that on? We've been pretty wrong in estimating what the Russians uh, have and haven't done in the past. Well, th this is just a matter of judgment. Uh, it, uh, it, it can't be precise. Uh, and uh, I, I wouldn't uh, be in a position to try to give you any of the data that would be available to me upon which to base this uh, general sort of a judgment. Dr. Seaborg, the other day, Ambassador Stevenson indicated that unless the Soviet Union agreed to, to a test ban treaty with effective controls, we would begin testing in the atmosphere. Do you know whether that has anything to do with official policy? I think that uh, uh, Ambassador Stevenson said that uh, the United States is obliged in self-protection to reserve the right to make preparations to test in the atmosphere as well as underground. Well, do you think that we would be ready to give up testing uh, in the atmosphere if the Soviet Union at this time would agree to a uh, treaty with controls and with inspection? Uh, would we be willing to, st to forego testing in the atmosphere? Would you recommend that? Well, I believe, if, if I understand your correction, your uh, uh, question correctly, uh, if the 
Russians were willing at this time to sign the treaty that we've tabled at Geneva right. with inspection, uh, that I would be in favor of uh, our signing the treaty and foregoing testing in, in the atmosphere, yes, sir. Would you be willing to forego under those conditions testing underground also? Uh, yes, uh, on the basis of that treaty. If the Russians would sign the treaty that we have tabled at Geneva, I, I would uh, be willing to do that. Uh, Dr. Seaborg, uh, Governor Rockefeller made a speech on Saturday in which he indicated, first of all, that the Russians were ahead of us because of the nearly three years of uncontrolled, uh, unmonitored uh, a test ban for that period. I didn't quite understand your answer to Mr. Spivak's question. Do you think we are ahead of the Soviet Union? Well, I I'm reluctant to... Uh to uh, speak in, in, in the vague terms as, uh, as to who's ahead. Uh, uh, those are very imprecise terms. Uh, it's very difficult to, to know what uh, one man has against another means by those terms. Uh, I, I have just have the feeling, uh, understanding how imprecise such a, a statement is, that in, in the aggregate, we are still ahead in the, of the Russians uh, with respect to our stockpile and our know-how in atomic weapons. You would say with respect to the range of our weapons, their size, the weight capacity, and all the rest of it? In, in, in the aggregate, in, the, in a general consideration of the whole situation, and uh, with the recognition of how uh, necessarily imprecise uh, such a consideration must be, I feel that we're still ahead of the Russians, yes, sir. This is an interesting word, imprecise. I'd like to ask you whether, in your opinion, anyone outside the field of the intense concentration of knowledge that you and others share can make these judgments. Well, I think that there are very many people within our government that can make these judgments if they're, if they're willing to uh, uh, do it within this uh, context. But you have people outside the government who seem to want to bring it into politics. Do you think this is a dangerous tendency or no? Well, no, I think that they certainly have uh, every right to, uh, to do that. I'd like to get you on a subject on which there has been a great deal of difference of opinion, and that is the effect of radioactive fallout. And there seem to be very widely divided <coughs> opinions, but as I understand it, on one subject, almost all scientists are agreed, and that is on the genetic effect of fallout over the long term. And the d while there's a difference, as I said, the degree of harm done uh, genetically, yet there is very widespread agreement on the harm that will be done. This 30 megaton explosion of the Soviet Union and the 51 megaton that seems about to come, can you tell us what the harm, uh, how, how great is the harm that will come out of these explosions? Uh, no, I think that uh, science is not yet able to answer that question precisely. Uh, there will be some genetic uh, damage to future generations, but uh, there is a wide range of difference of opinion uh, among scientists as to how great this would be. Well, I'm sure you recall that when the uh, United States exploded a 15 megaton uh, device on uh, the Bikini Pro uh, Proving Grounds in 1954. 1954, yes. Then, uh, because of the heavy radioactive level then, we postponed, as I recall it, uh, for 30 days later tests in that series. Now, was that because of the great concentration of radioactive fallout in the atmosphere? Well, uh, this, of course, is considerably before my time uh, uh, in my position of uh, present responsibility. I don't recall the details. It would not, however, if I may relate it to your previous question with respect to genetic damage, uh, it, I don't think it would be related to that. Well, uh, if I understand you then, you're saying that we really don't 
know or we don't believe that the Soviet explosions will do very much harm. Um, with respect to genetic damage? Well, sir. any kind of damage. Uh, well, I would, uh, wouldn't would say that uh, it won't do any kind of damage. I'm only saying that there, uh, the, the scientific basis for uh, a, a judgment on on this is lacking and that there is a rather substantial difference of opinion among scientists as to what the extent of the damage would be. Mr. Finney. Dr. Seaborg, the Soviet Union has now detonated some 25 atmospheric explosions in the current test series. What do you believe are the objectives of this very intensive test series? Oh, I, I just was state to uh, uh, broadly, their objectives are to improve their uh, weapon uh, weapons arsenal, but in addition, they apparently have uh, non-technical object, uh, objectives that I've referred to early, earlier, the psychological and the uh, uh, political and the terroristic objectives. These seem, these seem to be clear. Well, on the terroristic point, uh, are you suggesting that on the 50 megaton bomb that it's not really necessary to detonate such a device to develop it? That is right. It, it is not necessary to detonate uh, a full yield of 50 megatons uh, in order to develop it. Uh, uh, tests at smaller yields, uh, yields uh, more in the range of their earlier tests, uh, would be sufficient to develop a bomb of that magnitude or of higher magnitude. What military uses would there be for a 50 or a 100 megaton bomb, such as Mr. Khrushchev has said uh, the Soviet Union is going to build? Well, I'm, I don't think I'm enough of a military expert to uh, even try to respond to that question. Well, let's uh, take it in the reverse order then. If the Soviet Union develops a 50 or 100 megaton bomb, do you feel it would be incumbent upon the United States to develop similar weapons to have a counter deterrent? No, I don't, uh, at least not necessarily. On this question of atmospheric test testing, are we preparing any we talk for resumption of atmospheric tests? Uh, I can't respond to that. Mr. Hackus. Dr. Seaborg, on the same subject of resumption, of possible resumption by the United States of atmospheric testing, if we resume, what would be the first and foremost item of business? What would we be after, first it, and foremost? It, on, on the assumption that we decided, uh, the president yes. decided to uh, resume atmospheric testing, well, there are some things that you can do by testing in the atmosphere. Uh, that you can't do by testing underground. Uh, similarly, there's some advantages uh, to testing underground as compared to testing in the atmosphere. Uh, among the advantages, uh, the things that you can do by testing in the atmosphere that you can't do underground are, of course, to test the effects that depend on the environment, on the atmosphere. Uh, so uh, here we have the uh, testing of the effects of weapons on weapons in the atmosphere. Uh, you obviously can't do that underground. Um, uh, you also can't test uh, or proof test uh, very high yield weapons underground. There's some limit to the uh, uh, yield that you can test underground. And you also can't test uh, complete weapon systems. That is the combination of the uh, missile and the warhead uh, underground. Uh, such tests would have to be performed in the atmosphere. Would we be looking for something such as the uh, so-called neutron bomb as the next step, perhaps? Well, uh, we would be uh, trying to make all the improvements that are possible in our weapons. There, uh, going back to Bikini, if I may for a minute, at the UN last week, a Russian delegate poo-pooed our complaint about the 30 megaton Russian blast of last week by saying that the United States tested a 30 megaton bomb at Bikini. Uh, just how big was our test there? Well, the uh, United States has not tested a 30 megaton bomb. Anything larger than 15, can you tell us? 
The largest uh, test that has been announced is uh, 15 megatons, and uh, the uh, uh, unfortunately, or actually, I guess I should say, the uh, uh, precise yields, the actual yields of uh, the devices that uh, have been tested are uh, is in the category of uh, classified information. Dr. Seaborg, one other te uh, question on the Russian test. We have announced, I believe, or confirmed 25. Are there others that we have not announced, and if so, why? Yes, there are. Can you tell us well, generally I, how many more? What the? No, I can't tell you generally how many more. Uh, the reason was uh, given by the president some weeks ago in his statement, saying that it was in the interest of our national security uh, that uh, the tests that were announced were those where we knew clearly uh, that a test uh, had been uh, performed, that the yield was high enough so that we knew clearly, and uh, uh, that uh, we wouldn't reveal anything about our, uh, that we didn't want to reveal about our detection system in announcing the test. Mr. Spivak. Dr. Seaborg, is it our policy to announce all of our tests, and have we done so? Uh, again, the president, uh, uh, in his statement uh, announcing that we were resuming testing, indicated that he would reserve the right to not announce all of our tests. And is this... And so I, I will just uh, refer you to that as our policy. Uh, I'm not in a position to tell you whether we've announced them all or not. Dr. Seaborg, when the Atomic Energy uh, Commission announced a large nu uh, Soviet nuclear blast on October uh, 23rd, I believe you said, and I quote, it was possibly as large as 50 megatons, or, but more <coughs> probably on the order of 30 megatons. Yes. Was there some special reason for no, the no, precise this just, figure? Uh, this just relates, no, we were trying to be as precise as we could at that time, at an early time. Uh, this just relates to uh, the difficulty in, in getting uh, uh, a precise determination. And in our minds was the possibility, which, come out, which had come out from European sources, that this might indeed be the 50 megaton uh, uh, test that Khrushchev had said was going to come at the end of this month. Uh, in view of that, and because we couldn't be sure that it was not. We left that as a possibility. We now think, however, that it uh, definitely was not as high as 50 megatons, and that if Khrushchev uh, is going to, uh, uh, if it is true that he intended to explode a 50 megaton bomb, then that uh, explosion is yet to come. Dr. Seaborg, there's been a great deal of speculation over the years by, as to whether or not the Russians have been cheating in underground tests and have been concealing them. Uh, have you an opinion on that? No, I, 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 I don't. I just feel that I don't have any way of knowing. Have our detecting devices been improved in the three years of the moratorium? Uh, our detect yes, I would say they have. Yes, sir. Mr. Childs. Dr. Seaborg, I'd like to ask you about this problem of fallout in a possible nuclear war and the question of shelters. The head of biological sciences for the Atomic Energy Commission, Dr. Wolf, has said, that, in effect, that shelters are merely a means, or would be merely a means, of delaying death, since you would come out to a largely uninhabitable desert if you survived in your shelter. Do you think the government should encourage the building of shelters? What is your opinion about this? Well, uh, 